Hi there, my name is Dave Blake from EasyGates Direct and today I'll be talking you through the installation and the setup of the nice Biddy Wi-Fi and how you can use this device to program the parameters on your gate automation. So first things first, we need to take this, uh, this device and plug it into the top serial port on your gate control panel. When inserted, the LEDs on the top of the Biddy Wi-Fi will illuminate uh, to indicate the connection to the control panel. Okay, now we've got the Biddy Wi-Fi installed, uh, the next thing we need to do is configure it. And to do this, we need to download the app within the Google Play Store. Uh, so I'm just going to click install on the Google Play Store. Whilst that's installing, um, the, this app will become available on iOS devices soon. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, it's not yet available, so you will need an Android device to configure the Biddy Wi-Fi. So now the app has downloaded, I'm just gonna click open and allow it to store information to the device. And we now need to register the app uh, before we continue. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to have to do is enter an email address uh, that I'm going to use to register the device with. And I'm going to register this as a guest user. You can register it as a company, um, but you need authorization from the manufacturer. So if I do it as a guest user, it's much quicker. Okay. Continue. You'll then get emailed an authorization code or an access code. Uh, once this has come through, enter that access code in, and then we can sign in. The next thing we need to do is actually configure the Biddy Wi-Fi with the app. So I'm gonna, at this stage, click Start Configuration, and it's gonna ask me what, I'm gonna, what device I'm going to try and configure, which is the Biddy Wi-Fi. Click Continue. We need to check that it's actually connected and powered up first, which we have done already. So click continue again. And then it's gonna ask me to scan the QR code, which is on the paperwork, which is supplied with the, the box. So if we scan that code, it will then find the name of the, uh, the SSID that I'm connecting to, click continue, allow it to connect to the Wi-Fi networks and click connect. It will take you through uh, a process of connecting and configuring uh, before it allows us to go into uh, any of the next stages for configuration of the control panel there. Uh, but once it's all configured and connected, then it's a much quicker process to get into the parameters of the control panel. Okay, now so the uh, Biddy Wi-Fi is ready, uh, we click end, and it will start looking for the devices that it's connected to. Okay, so now we're connected to the Biddy Wi-Fi. Uh, we can go on to the next phase. Uh, as you can see behind me, the gates are in the halfway open position, and that's so I can take you through the setup of the, uh, the limits and registering devices and other parameters. So as you can see within the app, the MC824H is coming up as uh, not installed control units. And that is because uh, I haven't been through the full setup on the app yet, which is registration of the devices and limits, etc. So if I click on MC824H, uh, you'll see it'll take me into a sort of setup wizard. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna click on is install at the top. And it's looking for devices, which is the connected devices, which will be the Bluebus devices. I have got no photo cells connected in at this stage, so it hasn't found anything yet, as you can see. So if I click continue, the next type is looking for motor type. Uh, now the LFAB motors, they share the same encoder as the uh, TO5024, which is why you've got that displayed there. So click continue. And then the next phase is gonna look for the positions. So again, the reason I've set the gates at this 45 degree angle is so that we know the direction that the gates initially move in uh, is correct. Now these gates should run to the closed position first and the reason for that is is so that the logic on the automatic closure and on the photocells is set correctly. So if the gates started going to the open position which they could do because they're not handed motors uh, the, the next phase you interrupt the travel positions and reverse the polarity on the positive and negative um, to that motor, whichever one starts running open first and then start the process again. But because I know 
this is already set up correctly. These gates should run to the closed position first. So going back to the app, if I click continue in there and click start, you'll hear a click on the panel and the gates will start running very slowly to the closed position. Once they're closed, they'll start to reopen as you can see. And again, they run very, very slowly uh, back to the open position. Now, once they actually reach the open position, they should close at their normal speed. Um, so just need to make sure I'm out of the way here before they uh, knock me over. But uh, once they get fully open, we should see them close at the normal speed. And once they get back to that fully closed position, we should see that LED three and four on the control panel will go off. And that indicates that the position search has been fully successful. So let me just stand out of the way here. As you can see, they're running much quicker in the closed direction now. And that's just because they're finishing their limit phase where they're searching for their limits and that when it comes back to that closed position again like i said three led three and four will go off that indicates it's successfully completed or if we check back to the app um, that will also indicate a successful position search with a green tick so if i click continue and i'm going to join this to uh, the plant which is what i created earlier i'm going to connect this to test two and click end. Installation done. Congratulations. You can now continue with the rest of the configuration. So click OK. So there are other parameters that you may want to change. So we've registered the uh, photo cells. We've registered the limits. Uh, you might want to switch on automatic closure. You may want to adjust the automatic closure time. You may wish to change some of the inputs or the output configuration, such as the electric lock time or something like that. So we can do this by going back into the configuration of this control panel and you'll see the full list of the parameters that you can change. So the installation, the blue bus search, motor type, uh, the redo positions, should we want to do that, uh, automatic actions, which would be auto closure. So I can show you, I can quickly go into there and I can have that set to, let's set that to 10 seconds and make sure it's on at the top. In fact, let's turn that to 15 seconds and then come back out of there. Reclose after photo, that's a feature which basically enables the gates to automatically close or to force a closure while, if there's been a power cut and the gates have been stuck open. So we can switch that on. All of these parameters will tell you exactly what they do as well when you go into them. And then we've got the safety for connected devices, obstacle detection as well. Um, we can set the four settings on these motors to make them more sensitive or less sensitive to obstacle detection. So for instance, these fully boarded gates there, we, we may want to reduce the sensitivity um, to enable to make sure that they can cope with windy conditions, etc. And then you've got advanced parameters, which has got input or output configuration. I can quickly show you the output configuration for your electric lock. And if you go into electric lock time, um, that you can configure that. So if you've got a mag lock fitted or something like that, you need the output duration to be a bit longer. We can increase that to say five seconds and come back out. As you can see, that is a great tool for uh, the configuration of the MCA248H and all the nice control panels there. Uh, this is compatible with their, all of their newest series of control panel devices. For more information, uh, contact us on 01384 569 942 or contact us via email via technical at easygates.co.uk.